Welcome back to Finding Your Initial Customers. This is module two, Anatomy of Unsuccessful Startups. We're going to look at failure. First, why do startups fail? So in 2018, CB Insights put together this set of research on hundreds of conversations they had with founders who had just failed with their startups. These are the top 20 reasons why startups, from their perspective, went out of business. Number one, no market need. Number two, ran out of cash. Number three, not the right team. Number four, got out-competed. Number five, pricing, et cetera, et cetera. So take a look at this. Going back in time, in 2006, Paul Graham from Y Combinator had wrote a really wonderful blog post on the 18 mistakes that kill startups. Number one, single founder. Number two, bad location. Number three, marginal niche. Number four, a derivative idea. Okay, take a look here. And Startup Genome focuses on studying startup effectiveness across the globe. And they categorize startups in terms of um, what they call discovery-based startups and efficiency startups, and those startups that make it and those that don't. And what they found is that on the customer acquisition side, startups that prematurely die spend over $15,000 a month on customer acquisition before they optimize the process. Whereas 80% of the startups that make it take a little bit slower of a path. This also applies to team size. So startups that don't end up making it or don't do as well tend to scale their team and in fact have 50% larger teams before their company is ready to scale than those startups that make it. Startups that fail often are perfectionists. They focus on too much scalability too early on building a whole bunch of nice to have features that are not must have features. They don't talk to enough customers and they don't do enough user testing. And they also write a lot more code. Okay, so there's three different data sets that I looked at here. And when studying this data, it became clear that only one in 12 startups make it long-term. And if anecdotally you talk to some of your founder friends, you'll start to hear all these stories about failure. Roughly 75% of failure is, in my view, market or product market fit related. Okay, these are things that are related to growth. These are things that may be more in control than you think. Put simply, most startups fail because they don't find customers quickly enough, or they don't build enough value for those customers to stick around long term. And these are all themes that you have some control over. You have to figure out customer acquisition early. Now, there's some common misconceptions. Here's what we're led to believe. We're, we look at all of these high growth startups and they're put on fancy charts like this. And it is supposed to be a roadmap for acquiring your first thousand users or first 10,000 users or customers. The challenge is that most of our startups are not like these growth stage companies. Now, the takeaway here is that early on, some of these tactics were working for these companies. And so you can learn from that. But I would urge you to not look at these big, big, big companies and, and see what they're doing and try to build your acquisition model around what they're currently doing, because you probably don't have the budget or the team to do it. But you can look at guides like this to help you think about, well, what broad direction should I go when thinking about customer acquisition? Now we're told to focus on a single marketing channel or we're told to not focus on a single marketing channel. We're told to go deep or go wide into marketing channels. We're told to spend money. We're told to not spend money, launch early, launch when things look great. And then what we hear, we hear things like you don't need to run ads, just become great at SEO or ads are bad or email won't work for you. Email's dead or do what Clubhouse and some of the other platforms did and just build a massive pre-launch list and build FOMO or hire an agency or build a better product or build a better product again, or product-led growth is gonna save us. We're gonna ride that all the way or build in stealth and then do a big launch. I mean, these are all the things. I mean, I literally hear these every day from founders and here's what we think. We think that this is not gonna be that hard because my idea is awesome or that my product is great and people are gonna use it. Word of mouth is gonna kick in, that's what we think. And I'm pretty good at some channel, so I'll figure this out. Or I don't need to launch yet. I'll get PR and I'll launch on Product Hunt and things are gonna be great. 
uh, and then I'll do what all those other people told me to do. And these are the things that we're thinking. And, and this is some of what we see. These are some examples that uh, folks sent me in LinkedIn. I mean, no warm up at all, just blatantly trying to sell me something. I have no context on who any of these people are. These are all real messages. A human is spending time putting this together. In my experience, you're likely going to need to grind it out for a while on customer acquisition and growth. This stuff is hard. So I'm going to help prepare you for this journey and we'll have some fun along the way. But before that, to find customers, you really need a problem that's big enough that people will pay for a solution. And so from a product marketing standpoint, you have to understand what's the value you're bringing to the table and what are people willing to pay? And if you don't have any paying users yet, that's totally fine. You're going to use this process as a way to validate how much to charge. Then you need to get your product in front of potential users or buyers. And in the next module, what I'll walk you through is the starting point, four steps to start thinking about getting those customers. I'll see you there.